Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here this week week number one of the UBL season four and I'm incredibly nervous. Uh, Vepsis and I have spent a lot of time trying to figure out this entire land connection thing and we've done it, we will have a chest timer and I'm just incredibly, incredibly nervous because um, a lot is riding on a very specific game plan of mine and honestly, I think if um, I can get a few solid turns at the beginning, then I think my, te my team matches up well, but uh, if not, then the Seismitoad can honestly just kind of wall off my team pretty much indefinitely. So that's going to be a struggle. Oh, we are already in here. So we'll see the matchup. We do you see the Seismitoad? I'm going to take a screenshot of the team so I don't forget. But uh, we will see Seismitoad, Corviknight, Centiscorch. Uh, Obstagoon. Obstagoon, uh, Rotom, and Noivern. So, I honestly did not expect to see the... the... Rotom coming. I thought definitely that would stay on the bench, but... I really need to pull up... Uh, our teams. And hopefully I can do this in time. I have plenty of time because I know for a fact that I'm gonna lead off with Duraludon. Um, I just need to pull up the Yubia website so I can pull up the matchup here. Yeah, okay. So he left behind Grimmsnarl, which is pretty wild to me. Uh, I'm going to start locking stuff in. Um, but... Yeah, this is, I, I'm incredibly stressed. I really am kind of just going off of... I'm kind of flying off the seat of my pants here. Um, let's see. No Conkeldur. No Conkeldur is really wild. No no Espeon. Um, and no Weezing. Okay. That is, again, really, really wild to me. Um, I would be reasonably confident that he wants to start off with the Seismitoad here because Seismitoad just has a really good matchup against my team and I don't have any removal. Uh, leads off with this thing here. Okay. That's really interesting. Um, I don't think... <sighs> That's super unfortunate. So he does frisk my power herb, but... He might already know exactly what I'm trying to do here, but... Um... Flash Cannon... Actually, you know what? Stealth Rocks also seem... Seem pretty darn free here, I think. Um, I don't think there's really any single move that he can go for that's really going to mess me up too, too badly. Uh, I do have I, I do have flash cannon, which is reasonably free against this team. I really want to take the take the early damage, but I'm gonna go for Stealth Rocks turn one. He goes for the U-turn. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. But this is probably a free obstacle for him. Actually, that's actually a free obstacle for him. Uh, goes into Scent Scorch. Okay. Okay. I'm not the most afraid of Scent Scorch. But I don't know. Maybe I should be. I am going to... Go straight out into my Dracovish here. I don't know how... Aggressive he would be in terms of trying to... Um, play around my Duraludon switch, any Duraludon switches in with, um, the Seismitoad, and now that he knows that I'm Power Herb and very potentially Solar Beam. Does go for the knockoff. Uh, he's just gonna knock off a Splash Plate. If there's anything that, um, that, I, that I'm fine get, being knocked off, it's definitely this thing. Um, I could also just try to set up a sub here. Is a sub worth it here? It is definitely not worth it. I actually want to double here. I actually definitely want to double here. I definitely want to double here. But should I? Um. I think I will. I think I will. 
I really don't think you would want to stay in here, but I don't know. That's what draws. And we do see the Seismitoad, okay. So this is gonna be really free rocks damage. Um, but now that he knows that I'm Power Herb, he also probably knows that I'm Solar Beam. So, he could be expecting this completely. In which case, my Solar Beam was never gonna work. Um, the way that I, I don't know. Solar Beam is really honestly no a pretty no drawback play. But, a Flash Cannon would, would obviously be free damage on, on anything if he chooses to switch. Let's, I don't know. We'll see. Does withdraw, yeah. Yeah, he, he he knew it a mile away. He knew it a mile away. But if it doesn't work now, then it was never going to work. So that's kind of what I had to bank on that he didn't that he didn't know. But now he absolutely knows. And like I said, it, if, if it wasn't going to work in that, on that turn, then it was never, ever going to work. So from here, from here... I don't even know. So it's obviously heavy duty boots, right? Um, he can try to knock off again, although I don't have an item anymore. Um, what am I even doing to send a scourge, man? Time is already not on my side, which is uh pretty bad for me. Yeah, Thunderbolt doesn't look great, but. What can I do? You just went for knockoff last time. Yeah, Duraludon isn't going to be the most useful anymore. I mean, Duraludon was never the most useful, especially in this type of matchup. I can just kind of wear this thing down. That is very, that is pretty darn defensive, but yeah, there was no use in trying to do anything here. I can just continually try to knock off here. Or continually try to Thunderbolt here. Because, again, I mean, Dr Draladon already got rocks. I'm not going to be able to kind of mess with the... the... Seismitoad. So, at this point, I can just kind of go for damage here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna try to continue to get damage. I think I take one more Fire Lash and I get one more hit off. Go, oh, okay, that's... <sighs> this is exactly what he did against against me last time. He got off a whole bunch of rest shenanigans that I could not break, but he's obviously heavy duty boots. So I do have a couple turns to kind of try and make something happen here. Yeah. I don't think he has the best possible answers to my Togekiss here. Um, yeah, we're just gonna run with it. There's sleep talk. This is exactly what he did last. He does get the rest. Okay, so this is exactly how he, how he handled me last time with a with a gosh dang sleep talk type null. But I think I can just go for the air slash here. Try to make some things happen. If he does go into the... Yeah. So this thing... Yeah, okay. So it's a turn of sleep to burn. It's going to coordinate. That's That seems fine. Because Flamethrower is going to be a 2 KO, and his Iron Head is never a 2 KO on me. So I feel okay enough about this. That was a crit, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I can just go for the flamethrower here. I don't, I don't like how this is going, right? Again, I still think that my team matches up well, but it's, a, a lot of things are going very awkwardly right now and I don't like it. 
I honestly think that chip damage might be the difference between this being a 2 KO. Okay, never mind. Could that honestly be Assault Vested? Iron Head does about what I would expect. Or no, it was Aqua Berry. What am I... But it's definitely really specially defensive. It's definitely really specially defensive. But if this Corviknight's out of the way, then that also opens the door up a lot for some other things. Hmm. I don't know how I should play this. To get the burn, okay. That's reasonably unfortunate, but I am... I am... So, I, yeah, I'm actually going to heal more than he did to me, probably. But, um, I am Serene Grace, so I guess that was a 20%. That was a 20%er. Um, and now it actually looks like I'm free to air slash here, but I don't... I should Aura Sphere, actually. I probably shouldn't. Um, Sense Scorch gets Flash Fire. Yeah, it does. But it shouldn't matter. Yeah, especially if it's asleep, it shouldn't really matter. He has no reason to save this when it can when it goes down to rocks on re-entry. So we do I get the first KO of the season. Um Corviknight not being there is really huge. It's really huge. It's actually really huge. Um But this thing comes in. I think this is an easy Actually, does he have removal? Oh, he has Noivern potential removal. Um, this thing still has a lot of usefulness for me. So, I think... I think my Rotom is honestly the best thing that I can go into here. And... My Cinderace is still in an okay position to start doing some things in the later game. But, um, there's a few things, obviously, that have to happen. Let's go for the Vault Switch, that's fine. That's totally fine. That's, that is, that has to be very defensive, because, um, that was very not great damage. But, whatever comes in, I should be able to get free Vault Switch off, because I would sincerely doubt that he brings the Seismitoad in here. Which would mean that I do have an opening to kind of play around here a little bit. Um... Let's go into this thing. Um, I will reveal that I am scar- well, he's gonna find out that I'm scarfed anyway. So... Uh, what can I do now? I mean, this- this honestly opens the door for him to go into Seismitoad. Huh, let me think here. It does open the door for him to go into Seismitoad. So I can make the super duper man play and go for the Leaf Storm. Because he knows that I'm scarfed. He 100% knows that I'm scarfed. Right? He 100% knows that I'm scarfed. Oh, also, this thing is heavy duty boots. Just, I need to keep that in my mind mentally. Keep that in my mind. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, so he 100% knows I'm scarfed. He knows that my play would be to click Volt Switch here. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. We, we have to make a really bold play. Goes for the Protect. Okay, that's fair. That's totally fair. I mean, I can very freely click U-Turn. Yeah. So, mm, this thing is Protect U-Turn already, so... Possibly just dual stab, but that seems pretty dubious. Um, it's definitely gonna go for the U-turn now. It's definitely gonna go for the U-turn now. But I think he has to respect my my thing here. U-turn is one hundred percent his play, and I have to make my moves faster because he is beating me on the timer game a little bit here um he he will get to come go into whatever he wants but at this point i don't even think it really matters that much um he can go into seismitoad now and i can u-turn out which is fine but obstagon really isn't a play because i have two ko obstagon with u-turn but probably um does go into this thing. So this could be free rocks for him, but yeah, that's probably is what he's going for, isn't it? That probably is what he's going for, isn't it? But no, I have to click U-turn. I 
have to click U-turn here. I'm gonna do it. Because... I think... It's Rocky Helmet, okay. That's something good to know. Although U-turn did very respectable damage. Uh, this should allow me to go into my Ore Beetle here, right? And... We should at least be able to, to trade hazards here. Goes for Sludge Bomb. Okay. That's interesting. That's super duper interesting. So he, he, he might have expected me to go for a... Oh, maybe he expected me to go for the Rotom play here? Um... I do have the energy ball. It's probably not going to matter too, too much. Well, no, if it's Rocky Helmet, it's probably physically defensive. He probably thinks that I'm going to go for rocks here. He probably thinks that I'm going to make the rocks play here. And I can go for energy ball. I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. I have to play a little bit faster and I have to kind of hope that I'm... I don't know. He, he knows that I can potentially have U-turn. I can potentially have sticky webs. So he has to respect this thing a little bit. Which is going to mean... Maybe no. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm getting way too caught up in trying to catch this dang seismitoad. But the seismitoad just has me so worried, man. I don't know. But man, if I did go for U-turn on this turn, that would be bananas. Um, can this thing just KO me after the flame? After the flame orb, yeah. Obstagoon. Guts. Flame Orb. Knock off. Against. Orb Beetle. Okay, um, I think, yeah, I think I can go, in, go into this thing. I feel like my Duraludon is definitely the most useless Mon on my team right now. And I can start to play my Cinderace a little bit, um, recklessly here. I do survive on two... HP, which is actually huge because it means he's that he's going to have to take one extra round of um, flame flame warp damage, <coughs> and I get taken out. That's totally fine. And now that should, by every indication, mean that Cinderace can come in and KO with a U-turn. Actually, Cinderace does more damage with a Pyro Ball, but it's going to put me in a worse position with the Seismitoad, potentially. So I kind of have to hope to, that I get a, a decent roll on the U-turn here to KO. But regardless, I should pick up the KO with another turn of burn damage. And I have to get on top of this timer, man, because uh, he is definitely choosing, making his moves quicker than I am right now. And I have to worry about that. I have to worry about that. So, I am slowly wearing down his team. And I do feel solid about it. Um, let's go into this thing. Okay. He does see my choice scarf. Okay, that's fair. And I have to keep in mind that this thing has protect. Or can have protect? Or no. Yeah, it can use protect. So I have to be wary of whatever I do here. I think... Hmm. I struggle against this thing. Quite a bit. I struggle against this, th this thing quite a bit, but... What I can do is I can bait the Protect with a Volt Switch. And from there, I can I can make a double into something. Probably just into um, my Ore Beetle. And then I can click U-Turn 
thinking that he might want to go into uh, the thing. Obstagoon. And then Orbeetle would have a... It would deal some solid damage against the Obstagoon. It would give me a little bit of headway here. Uh, and then we can go on from there. So... Oof. Even that's some super solid damage. But, no, I mean, he definitely would, would want the Noivern up against this, this War Beetle. So... Yeah, I guess we can just sack this off for... For... A... Cinderace play. We can definitely just sack off this War Beetle for Cinderace play. Um, there's a knockoff. Yeah. I have to consistently sack off to this thing, which is awful right now, but it's kind of just how this has to go for now. And I have to make my move super fast. Um, and it does keep webs off of his field, which, um, he does have enough mods off the ground still that uh, I guess it never really mattered, but, um... I really should have just clicked a Zen Headbutt there, probably. Zen Headbutt was probably the better play, because I, he's probably not going to stay in here. He knows that I have to sack off mods to this thing whenever it comes on in. Um, so yeah. Especially if something like the... I mean, honestly, I, I think this game is going to go to timer on my end, and... Uh, I'm gonna lose this off of timer, but um, I don't think I'm in the worst position where if this match could go on for, for an hour like our matches tend to go um, I think I could have found an opportunity to, to, to break through over a long enough um, Over a long enough game, but I just don't think I have the time right now to be able to do this Which is I mean, it's it's understandable. It's fine. Like I'm, I don't think it's uh, the worst thing in the world, but it's just not ideal right now it's just not ideal right now. And there's really no point in me going into... In me going into, um... Uh... The thing again, because he's always going to be able to make those protect plays against me. And it's going to not really end up putting me in a better position. Uh, if I was able to take a facade... Oh my god, I actually take a facade from Obstagoon. I don't if it's adamant, <laughs> but can he? I don't know. I actually don't take it if it's adamant. I have a chance to take it if it's adamant. Oh no, that's that's the wrong one. If it's adamant and I'm at 129 HP... Then, huh, I honestly might have just thrown the game. I didn't think I, I, I thought I was out of, I was still in range and I didn't click Dazzling Gleam. If I'd click, mm. I think I have to, yeah. Hmm. That might have honestly choked the game away. That might have honestly choked the game away. I, I, I didn't think that my Togekiss was out of range of a facade from Obstagoon, but I was. This is a very physically defensive Togekiss, and I was out of range. If I'd known that I was out of range, then I could re preserve HP on it and potentially get somewhere.
Yeah, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. And even then, I'd be in a much better spot if I just clicked Dazzling Gleam there. What do I even do here? Just gonna click Zen Headbutt. He might call it, he might not. I don't think he ever... I have to... Mm. Now Obstagoon always just gets a KO. Hmm. But now he's he's doing worse on timer than I am, so if I can just make some quick moves, then maybe we can do this, but I honestly think that I choked the game away by not realizing exactly where my Togekiss stood in terms of taking an obstacle and facade. If I had known, especially because Jolly Obstagoon, I pretty much always took that. But now I'm in a position where I'm, I honestly might as well just sack off my my Dracovish here. I honestly just might as well sack off my Dracovish here. That's going to allow me to finally actually get a KO onto... I don't think that crit mattered, but, um... That's gonna actually allow me to U-turn with my... Cinderace here. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Dracovish is a pretty naturally defensive boy, but, uh, I don't think that- Yeah, no, that didn't matter. Um, and now U-turn finally actually does something. Um... Yeah, this isn't a super unfortunate way for this match to go, but I think ultimately there wasn't. I I I, I had to play my Togekiss better. Is is just what it comes down to? That's really all that it comes down to. And I'm gonna take a second and try to. He has 42 seconds. He has 42 seconds. And I need... Yes, okay, that is what I needed. Now, something happens. I don't know what happens, but something happens. My Rotom can actually... Can it win the match? No. I mean, it can't deal with his Rotom. Well. But at this point, at this point, I might actually just win on, uh, on timer here. Oof, I was, uh, I didn't want to say it, but I was really hoping that we took that. I was really hoping that we took it. That was huge. That is actually hum that is, oof, that is unimaginably huge. That is unimaginably huge. I think... Somehow we're gonna win this, right? I think. I believe I can bring this thing in. And fire off Thunderbolts. Uh... And somehow? this happens? I don't know. I don't know. Does what draw? Is this the Scent of Scorch? Yeah. It still sleeps, and I do get one free turn, although... Yeah. I don't think he has the time, unless... He, he has to get super lucky with a Fire Lash on the... on the sleep talk. If he gets Fire Lash now, then... 
I potentially just lose? Goes for knock. Gets the knockoff. Okay. That's actually almost as huge. But, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. Does he? Yeah, he clicks rest again. But it's not going to matter because now I went on timer. He's not even going get to get the chance to get lucky with, with Sleep Talk because I would win this one on timer now. I have an entire like minute on him. Almost. Um, and I think Cinderace is going to be able to clean it up. Right? Actually, maybe not. Maybe not. He needs to get lucky again with Firelight. I mean, I, I can get Knock Off or Rest. That's... That's 67... That's two-thirds chance for me to still win this game. Oh, okay. <sighs> My god. I don't know. No... Wait, what am I doing? I... I mean, I don't know if it matters. Actually, it probably doesn't matter. It probably doesn't matter. <coughs> But I have Hex on this thing. Does it matter? If it does matter, then I'd be pretty upset. Scent of Scorch. If Scent of Scorch is asleep... No, Hex still does less. Okay, thank god. Okay, Hex still does less than Thunderbolt. Hex still does less than Thunderbolt. But he still has not gotten Fire Lash off of Sleep Talk. <sighs> Thank Christ Hex still does still does less. I would be so upset if I double choked by by not getting this dang. He has to rest. Maybe it's time to go for... Maybe it's time to go for... Cinderace here? Cinderace can Zen Headbutt, but he still has the Obstagoon. But the Obstagoon goes down to... Oh, I clicked Hex by accident. Okay. I meant to click Volt Switch, but I, I guess it doesn't matter anymore anyway. It just preserves PP, I guess. I don't know, man. But yeah, I should be able to click Zen Headbutt because... Of the... Yeah, he got super duper unlucky. Like, legitimately. But now I can click Volt Switch. This is going to be the last turn of the match, and... We should win this? I don't know. This is going to allow... This guy to come in. And it's gonna be a safe switch in. Let's get the knockoff. Yeah, so that was so that was a potentially game choking play. If it wasn't the last turn the last turn of the game. Actually no, I think I think Um that would have knocked out my Rotom, so it, it doesn't affect the outcome of the game at all, except for I guess that cheat or whatever, but um But yeah, that's yeah, that's the end of the game, man. I don't know. Obviously, there was a lot of luck involved in that outcome, but um, I don't know, man. That's just gonna be how how the game one ends. Hey, so I just wanted to come back in and give a proper outro because my outro was very just confused. Um, and Bebsis and I did a lot of talking after the game, so I kind of wanted to do like a little bit of a post game recap talk. So. Obviously, uh, there were a few things that I could have done better. I'm really disappointed that I didn't understand what Togekiss could take, and 
if I had been able to play my Togekiss better, take a facade from the Obstagoon, and hit it back with a Dazzling Gleam, then that would have put me in a much, much better position. And I said in my original intro that Noivern just having Protect made it so difficult for me to kind of make the maneuvers that I really wanted to make. Uh, I think 100% if that Noivern did, didn't have Protect, then I could have maneuvered myself a lot better. I would have had a better chance in this game. And also, one other thing that Vepsis and I talked a lot about, I did not realize in the moment how low that Obstagoon was, because in my mind, Obstagoon was rocks and one turn of burn away from being KO'd. So I wanted to try to bait in the Obstagoon one last time to finally KO it, um, and I never got the chance to, obviously. But what Vepsis and I were talking about was, if I had gone down with my Rotom, or I was able to, to freely Volt Switch into my Cinderace, then I could have gone for a game by clicking Zen Headbutt a bunch of times because every Mon left on his team was within range of Rocks plus Zen Headbutt, right? The Noivern was super low at that point, I believe. Um, the Rotom took a lot of damage and, and it was pretty low. And uh, Obstagoon would have gone down to re-entry on Rocks. That is what I am most disappointed about. Me not realizing that meant that Cinderace was never able to go for a game. And obviously the big um, issue would have been the Santa Scorch. If it was in a position where Santa Scorch had to take max turns of sleep and Cinderace was a potential 3 hit KO, I would have needed that 3 hit KO while it was asleep and I would have had to have gotten lucky with the sleep talk turns, but I think we both agreed that that was my clearest path to victory. And on either side, it would have been super RNG heavy because whichever one of us won would have had to have gotten really lucky with sleep talk. I also had the Zen Headbutt flinches in play as well, so that could have played it in my favor as well. But we both agreed that all I had to do in that moment was go for game with my Cinderace. Zen Headbutt was absolutely free. Uh, the Obstagoon would have gone down to rocks, which was the only thing that would stop my Cinderace from clicking Zen Headbutt freely. So that was just kind of disappointing on my end, I think. But I think a lot of it just came down to nerves and this being my first ever battle playing in Sword and Shield and obviously just getting freaked out by timer. So uh, I think I'm going to do better in the following weeks, but uh, talking over with Epsis after the match made me feel a lot better about how I played and obviously about the outcome because um, I did feel really down about how I won in the beginning, but at the same time, Vepsis ha had to resort to continually resting off my Rotom damage, and uh, at, that, at that point, his only win con was continually resting and getting lucky with Sleep Talk, and so in some sense, he wasn't able to beat me within timer, so I do kind of feel a little bit less bad about how it how it ended from the moment that uh, the match originally happened. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to be it for me. Uh, I think that's really all, all else that I had to say about this match. I am really just super disappointed in, in myself by not realizing that Obstagoon HP and that it would go down to rocks when it came back in. And I think I had a few paths to victory, just a few really big mistakes that... Uh, could have lost me the game, but uh, because of this time where we somehow ended up winning, we're going to bounce back, make the season proud, and have a strong showing moving forward. But uh, once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be once again out.